The reason the reason I, I am a bit familiar with this is because neuro law, which is the career I want to go to, that's like the, the focal question in neuro law is are these criminal acts being committed as a consequence of free will or a consequence of these sort of predetermined neural pathways? Are are we free, right? How 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 I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of debate, but it, as far as my stance on free will, I, I say we do. Although I am a determinist when it comes to moral responsibility, I'm absolutely so. I don't believe it, it, it as far as evil is concerned, right? Not you know you know stealing from a grocery store. Or, there's something like that. I do believe you can be you know morally uh, blamed for. But I think anything that sort of exceeds the bounds of sort of normality and sort of just, uh, you know, again, like anything we call heinous or collectively call evil, I do not think that there is free will in, in these actions. Now, I'm not, not, that's not to say that they shouldn't be punished or, any, or anything, but uh, for example, it, it kind of ties in with my perspective on law. So there's there's a few different perspectives you can take the sort of retribution, right? You sort of atone for your sins in a sense. You have rehabilitation, which is sort of, right, we, we, can, we can fix, you know, the, uh, we can fix them. Uh, the, the, these wrongdoers and then you have public safety which is the approach that i sort of that's the sort of proposition i i, I ascend to is that or the framework i i subscribe to is that uh, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are if you committed the crime you're not safe for the public so you should uh you should be in prison right I, i'm not really interested in the sort of context to, to, mm. any, to any degree because again I, I don't even believe that for a lot of crimes you're even responsible like i i don't even morally condemn you for what you did but you're not safe for the public at large so you need to be isolated. Ah, so it's almost like a pragmatic type of yeah, incorporation exactly. to a certain yeah. extent. I, I find it very difficult to to as, to ascribe, you know, sort of attribute responsibility to to these sort of people that commit these sort of higher order grievances. And, and I because I think it always stems down to it always comes down to these sort of different approaches, right? So you do see that where you know people, ex veterans or veterans end up sort of developing PTSD and they could commit you know uh, heinous acts. You could apply that to uh, you can apply that to children raised up, in, raised in a traumatic home, because you often see the argument is the argument is there. Well, okay, not not everyone that you know uh, has a traumatic upbringing goes on and commits uh, uh, you know crime or, or evil or whatever the case may be. And again, that that argument may, may seem uh, you know sufficient on the surface, but again, if you sort of delve deeper in, in into this sort of uh, the, the the circuitry of it all, perhaps it's the same situation when it comes to PTSD. That child that grew up in this home with the alcoholic father might have had, you know, altered altered brain chemistry, and and that sort of traumatic stimuli had a profound effect on their cognition, which was not the case for child B. I think that's actually a very interesting point of view because there are almost like, I think there are two points that can push back with this. The first Absolutely. is that I think society has a lot of obstacles for those people. So, for example, if you were raised in a negative, let's say, environment that made you susceptible to do crime, I think there's a lot of obstacles in front of you that you're not supposed to overcome, I guess. Mm. Like society would frown upon you if you do that crime. It seems to me like going and avoiding those obstacles requires agency to a certain extent because you have society frowning upon you, you have your family, you have mm. all these different obstacles that there's we have. societal crime. incentives to sort of inhibit your... Exactly. Desire. Not even societal, but I guess psychological, because humans from, I guess, the large majority of humans have this intuition to, I guess, do good rather than bad. So it seems to me like you have a lot of layers that should make you stop from doing that act. But the like overcoming those obstacles requires some kind of agency. So it seems to me like from that perspective, yes, negative environments increase the probability of some people committing crimes more than others, but at the same time, they have the agency to repress that action, I guess. So it seems to me like you could say that your conception is, okay, it increases the probability, but it seems to me like you took it to the extreme when you said it's a deterministic route. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it increases the probability, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's like a 100% deterministic route, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm.